Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of the Sushi review. This time featuring the second deck to come. The second British deck in the game as well, the second infantry division. <laughs> and it's quite a nice division as it's, what I would say, one of the most flat and all-around solid divisions that we got so far. As I don't feel it has any... Um, super insane strengths, but it also doesn't feel like it has any major weakness, which I kind of enjoy. Like, I like the middle of the bunch divisions, and that's why I am pretty sure I will play 2nd Infantry quite a bit as well. Starting in the logistics step, we have the standard. <laughs> we have the Bedford supply, we have the Chinook supply, which looks absolutely fabulous in its paint scheme. And it's Camouflage, and then a German lightly armored um, CV, and then the faster uh, but unarmored Rover CP as the second CV option. So, yeah, not the deepest logistics steps, nothing super fancy here, but everything here is workable, and that is what it needs to be. Slots costs also decent, but not amazing. Then the infantry tab, where you get quite a lot of options and you can start with the RMP that we already know the military police and those are decent-ish but I wouldn't call them amazing I mean they have an LMG they only cost 15 points you get quite a lot of them which is nice then you get the terrier gun groups which are pretty nice with two MGs but the main reason why you take the gun group in my eyes in the the first ar armored division is that you get them in a warrior that doesn't happen here and on their own I don't think they're card efficient enough to be really considered here so I would stay away from this as well and the, both of these half man squads decent if you want to have half half strength squads but I wouldn't recommend them outright then the first leader which is a decent leader because it has a light anti-tank um, six strength the 130 points, I feel like it's a bit expensive for this loadout, uh, but yeah, you get 4 availability, which is also always nice on a leader. It's one of two 4 availability leaders, the other one being the Eagle leader, which has less strength, but the way better anti-tank weapon with the Calga stuff. So, um, yeah, there's the consideration I would say for the infantry leaders, or maybe you take another one of the leaders that are over here. Um, then, the Terrier. Your one of your baseline infantry options in this deck come at trained level of veterancy, which is decent but not amazing. And they have an old MG, they have old battle rifles. Like, yeah, the stats here are not great at all. The law is a mediocre anti tank launcher. I would say, a, a version is obviously still work in progress, but. 50 points here for this 8-man squad seems a bit high, uh, because nothing here is really shiny. I would say 45 points would be better, because yeah, it's a baseline infantry card. It will do its fighting, but it doesn't feel like it will do a lot of killing uh, with the weapon loadout that it got at the moment. But will be okay-ish. Uh, the anti-tank version of this is a bit more worth considering. You get 9 availability on a Carl Gustav squad for 25 points. 25 points, pretty cheap. You get them in a rover. Carl Gustav, good range, good accuracy. AT value is not the most amazing, but can do the job against everything, basically. So, especially if you get a side shot, like 16 is really good there. Um, So I would say these are worth while considering, especially as you also get 6 on one level up, and then they have 69 availability, which is uh, accuracy, which is nice. And yeah, so that is something you can think about. And then we get the first non germ, uh, yeah, another recall his rifle or recall his gun, and with the L6 Wombat, which is pretty cool 15 penetration, 1400 meter range, solid HE. So all of this is pretty solid. Rate of fire, a bit lower than, I think, the Soviet version, for example, the SPG-9. 
and accuracy is okay, but not amazing, um, which is a bit of a problem com uh, combined with the rate of fire, because you kind of want to hit the first shot. Uh, maybe you want to take them on one veteran C to four, if you want to take this next to the Milans. It's pretty cheap, and the HE extra support can be nice of these things, so yeah, the Wombat might be something to consider taking in this deck, as you get a lot of infantry slots. Um, then the two Milan options, the Milan 2 even can come in the links, so it can be a bit more mobile. We also see the Saxon for the first time here, which is a cute little <laughs> APC with an MG on top. Like, this thing looks really ruggish, but I love it. <laughs> it's, it's such a British vehicle. Um, and then the air, uh, airmobile part of this deck, which obviously all can come in the links as well, and in the Saxon. The leader being an 8-man squadron, but without AT, though relatively cheap, could be a consideration if for an infantry leader that just wants to move with the infantry and be tanky enough to take a bit of artillery fire whilst being in the zone. Then air mobile gun groups, which are just bigger than the terrier gun groups by adding two more, ma like, yeah, getting them up to 9 strength, three guns, so that those are even bigger than most of the other 3 MG gun groups, which is quite nice. Like, this all for 40 points is... Yeah, this make, makes the Terrier look pretty awful, if you compare this. I mean, they don't have anti-tank, which is their big weakness, compared to also the other, like, in the... I forgot the name of the ones in the in the German decks, but you also have their two medium, uh, three medium MG teams and so on. But those have anti-tank, though they're usually 7 or 8 strength, and this is 9 strength, which is quite nice. And, I mean, these guys want to shoot from the rear, they ain't supposed to fight in, uh, enemy tanks. And for tank fighting, you have the airmobile, with the amazing AL, uh, the Law 80, which, next to the Apelas and the good old um, SPG-29, is the third best the tank rocket launcher in the game. It has 20 penetration, which is really high. It has 60 accuracy, which is absolutely decent. Or, well, like, also pretty high, actually. And 850 meter range is the max range you get on an anti-tank rocket launcher. And all of that with a good rate of fire. Only issue with these is always that they are so big that they only can carry four. But that is somewhat fine, as you get a lot of air mobile if you want to. And that is for 60 points, so they are a bit more expensive here. But pretty decent squad as well, otherwise. Nine man strength, two... And light support weapons together with the gun groups can be a pretty strong combo. Uh, so, yeah, I would say this can be pretty cool. Then you get your rifle leaders, which are basically the same as the terrier leaders. Well, no, they don't have SMGs. They have a medium machine gun, though, which I would say might be better. And here you get your small bit of warrior options, as you also get the slight attachment from the third armored division that comes in this formation when it comes to infantry we have some armored rifles and warrior options so yeah that's another unit you can use here rifle, uh, rifle leaders and armored rifles decent unit war together with the warrior pretty solid um yeah the lore is okay Though, yeah, the, one of the weakest anti tank rocket launchers, but at least it has decent range and weapon loadout is pretty solid as well. And then you get a couple more German options down here the Hammerschützen and the Jaegers coming in here from the one detachment from that the, uh, that this division got from the Germans. Hammerschützen and Jaegers, same loadout, but one is a bit cheaper, though comes forced with the worst veterancy, which is pretty uh, pretty rough nerf, rate of fire, stress, and chance to hit heavily reduced. So you kind of want them around leaders all the time. If you do so, then the Hammerschützen become pretty solid, and the availability extra is nice and so on, but I would say usually go for the Jaegers, as you get a lot of cards here as well. And you get a Jaeger Führer, as we already said earlier. And then your Pioneer options are Terror Pioneer with 
nine man strength and TNT, and assault pioneers with eight man strength and TNT. So no flamethrowers in this one once more. British, not the biggest fan of flamethrowers. Uh, what I would like to see would be maybe Carl Gustav units with HE uh, in the future, but yeah, that is something that is not in the game yet. Uh, would be quite nice if we could get that eventually. Both pretty similar, these having the worst gun load off, but having more strength though. But these having the better guns and the better transport options, but less strength and costing more. So here I would actually ten uh, go maybe for the Terrier Pioneer because you want them in CQC and their extra hit points means you get uh, um, do survive longer to throw your TNT most likely. So I would get, go for a Terrier, but they have less availability. So yeah, that's a tough choice what to, what to go for here. You choose between these two. Um, but maybe you don't want to choose between these two at all because maybe you want to take another unit. And... That other unit is the SAS, and the SAS here comes with some powerful weaponry. They come with eight C8s, which are decent submachine guns, like good accuracy, um, good firepower, like pretty good submachine guns actually. And then you get an 84, which is a really strong anti-tank rocket launcher, and a Stinger, which is one of the best anti-air rocket launch uh, missiles. Where they also cleaned up the ranges now. It's lovely. As you can see, they cleaned up the ranges for infantry combat as well. All these numbers now are beautiful and not clunky anymore, which is lovely to see as well. Thanks for that, Eugen. Um, it, yeah, polish really starts to come in the game big time now with the latest changes, and I'm loving it. And yeah, SAS, a pretty good squadron. So eight 100 points, also a pretty hefty price. But that all of that the capabilities that these guys bring are pretty cool. So for availability on highest veteran C should be a unit that you should bring around with these cheap slots and that can fit in in some cool situations for sure. Having some AA on your frontline infantry always is pretty nice. Helping against helicopters, helping against some planes that want to dive on you. The SAS. I would take them. But yeah, let me know if you would take them as well. And then the artillery tab. Yeah, nice mix of things. Um, you start with some mortars, 81mm mortars, 120mm mortars. Then you go to smaller howitzers. The L118 is now in the game as well. 105mm artillery gun. Pretty standard. 6 rate of fire, pretty solid. HE damage, pretty fine as well. Then the 155mm Howitzer, which you already know, the Felto Pizza in British servers, um, yeah, can do good amount of work as well. The 105mm actually comes with pretty good availability, and then you get a big boy in this deck as well, the M107A2 175mm, which is a good caliber. Solid damage, solid range, rate of fire actually also okay for a big gun like this, for rate of fire. Makes this maybe even better than the M110. And so, yeah, this might be worthwhile considering with its 175mm gun, as it's also your only self-propelled option, but this really packs a punch. 210 points, obviously not cheap, but I would say this is worthwhile the price. And you get a good amount of slots as well, so yeah, it's not the best ever artillery tab, but it does its job and it has the versatility that you want out of an artillery tab. And then the tank, the uh, part of the deck, where you also are somewhat versatile, which is nice. Um, compared, to, for example, to the new French deck, this is pretty strong. Um, you get Milans, or Milan 1s or Milan 2s on small little vehicles. The Rover Milan looking pretty cute with its Milan 2. With six shots, actually also relatively good in that regard. Better than the French one, which only has four. So that is nice. And then you have your M48 uh, A2 G A2, which are your cheap tanky boys, 15 penetration, 2100 meter range. Decent, nothing 
the to write home about, but it gives you some cheap tanks. And you even get some high-end tanks with two cards of Challenger 2s. So, the small attachment there. Obviously, you can't fill the whole tank tab cheaply with all of this, but you could go for two Challenger cards, and then maybe one card of these, and then maybe this. In the end, it's somewhat fair amount of points into the tank tab. Or you just go with one Challenger card, one card here, one card here. Couple of options for sure. And, yeah. You are somewhat versatile. You can take a fight with some enemy tanks with this. You can deal with basically everything, just not in a super grindy fight. Like, you can't grind forever with your tanks, but your tanks can do the job that you want to do them, and that is a big advantage for over some divisions like KDA or Territorial Commando Zut or the new French Air One deck. In the Recon deck, you get some good infantry options as well and one pretty strong vehicle i'm still a big fan of the fv 721 fox and the amazing thing thing about this deck is you get six cards of them which might be two uh, three cards of them with six availability which might be a bit too many <laughs> like these things behind enemy lines could wreak a lot of havoc um Though obviously at some point the enemy should put something in there to defend against them, but the foxes behind enemy lines are n gnarly, and with three cards of them you can for sure wreak a lot of havoc. Though then the rest of your slots here are a bit expensive, and I guess you want to have some recon infantry as well, as the options here are not half bad. You get the terrier scout, which is relatively cheap. Has an MG four man squad, not the one I would go for. The normal scout though. Pretty decent, can come in Spartan, can come in a Gazelle, can come in a Rover. Um, has a Law, 4-man squadron, has different decent rifles as well. And then the Air Mobile Scout, 8-man strength, medium machine gun, and the light support weapon. So, 3 support weapons here. No, uh, 4 support weapons, two, sorry, 2 medium machine guns, 2 support guns, rifles here with the L86. And then the L85 as their basic sold rifle. And that is a lot of firepower in a recon squad. They're costing 75 points, but you get two cards of them here as well. Can get them in sex and can get them in a Lynx. Which is a solid option here as well for transports. And still sex and is also pretty fast. And together with the Eagle of Clearers, you get a pretty strong recon and force options here. Like the issue on these, obviously, is that they don't have anti-tank. In general, you don't have any amazing anti-tank on any of your Recon Infantry. Panzerfaust, decent. A law, pretty bad. Um, and these don't have any, so you got to be careful about that. But if you want to fight enemy infantry, and like any enemy Recon Infantry, this might be one of the best decks for that. If not the best deck for that in general. So that is quite nice. The Air Mobile Scouts, for sure, a powerful version for the recon tab here. AA? Um, yeah, it is AA. It's, it comes starting with the blowpipe, <laughs> which is pretty terrible. Low range, horrific accuracy. Really horrific accuracy. <laughs> 4 damage also, not great. And bad rate of fire, but it only costs you 10 points and you get 16 of them. Uh, so you can spam them left, right and center if you want to. Then you get the Javelin, which levels this all up a bit. Decent range, decent accuracy, still bad damage, but at least the other stats here are fine. The Javelin LML is back as well, with slightly better accuracy even. Um, and four of the, uh, three of these that launch pretty quickly in succession, so that can be nice, but the slow speed is a bit painful. And then you get your a bit better AA options with the rapier on a trailer that comes on uh, towed by the bad fort. Obviously, a bit painful. Like, you should know where you put this down before you place it. Otherwise, yeah, repositioning this, you really need a bad fort. The normal speed won't do it. Um, but 3000 meter range against helicopters means that you can really create an 
anti-helicopter umbrella for pretty cheap with 75 points. And the anti-air range also is decent enough that they can be helpful. Availability is a bit low, even with like the free veteran or like the veterancy that it comes base veterancy that it comes on. But 74% accuracy on the veterancy is nice on both the normal rep here and the tracked version. The tracked version also has the advantage that it has more missiles, so that is quite nice. And you only get one card of the tracked version, so I would say, consider, uh, say you take both options as you get a lot of cards. And then I guess you go with normal javelins on veterancy, like, or maybe maybe like this. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't recommend the blowpipe at all, but if you feel like you want to be a bit weird and fancy, feel free to spam 16 of them for 160 points. <laughs> <laughs> like, but uh, like even then, I don't think they will be any good. Um, yeah, blowpipe being blowpipe, and then helicopter. You get gazelle rockets, which I feel like are pretty damn uh, solid for their twenty points. And then you get some links in different versions with good optics. That we already know this, these as well. They come in the. In the first armored division as well. Normal toe or eye toe. So, yeah, solid anti tank helicopters as well. And yeah, I like the rocket gazelles. They can be pretty nice. Like with 12 rockets, they are usually pretty close to killing off an infantry squad or killing it. So, if you pink two of them for 40 points, which is next to nothing, you can consistently wipe out infantry squadrons and then go back, reload. Reload on these also super cheap. So, um, that is quite nice. And then the air tap, all the Harrier fans in the world now will be happy because you get six different versions of them, uh, four different versions of them, starting with the Harrier AA, which is really slow, but it has a good gun. It's, I would say, the really good against helicopters, so it's your anti-air, uh, anti-helo uh, Harrier, I would say, more so than your anti-air heli- uh, Harrier, because for that I would say you should use the Phantom in my eyes. Um, but the Harrier here, fine. Then you get a rocket version, a second rocket version with which has air to air missiles. Though I would say if you go rocket, go full rocket and take this one. And then one with bombs, all decent options, though they are not super cheap, but you get good availability at least with three. And they are also not that expensive. But Harry is always a bit tough to keep alive, even with the exceptional agility. So, yeah, I don't know. Harriers mm, haven't fully convinced me yet. And the air slots here are also pretty expensive, so you have to be somewhat careful with what you take. Phantom, though, has four sky flashes under it. The F3. And the Sidewinders certainly are bad Sidewinders. Four damage mediocre accuracy um, but the sky flash combined with the sidewinder can do the 10 damage so still could be solid um, slow speed is the pro of all phantoms though so that is the one thing that I would say will be the struggle of this that you don't have a fast air to air plane in this deck at all and your AA is not super against enemy airplanes so air spam against you could be nasty like your attack aircraft here in the form of the jaguar are faster than your fastest fighter and that is not great though the jaguars are fine you get a cluster one and you get two he options one with 500 kilogram bombs one with a bit more 227 kilogram bombs for slightly cheaper and then you get a tornado with a lot of 500 kilogram bombs um, which goes even faster <laughs> and but it Air to air capabilities are solid. The AM uh, 9M is a decent short range missile, but you don't have a long range missile on it, so and it's pretty expensive as well. So, really, not what you want to bring around for a fight there either. So, a solid bomber, but the price is pretty hefty. Most expensive unit in the deck. Um, yeah, as I said, a deck that is a pretty solid all rounder. Not only the air option here is a bit. Something I don't like about it, but the helicopter is workable. I like the gazelle rocket, I like the Lynxes, 
Air A, A with the two rapier versions you are somewhat well covered as well. Javelin does its job. Uh, infantry recon, great. Small little foxes also really nice. Tank tap workable, artillery tap, yeah, solid all around as well. And the infantry tap has a lot of versatility and some nice strengths as well, so should be quite nice too. Uh, so yeah, all of this making this a pretty basic deck in my eyes. Like nothing here will be super OP, but it should do its job. It should have good enough options in every tab that you can play around it in team games in one v one and be fine. If you want to play British, this gives you perfect baseline British, and that is nice to have in a game. So yep. Yeah. Great addition to the game, and that is the second infantry. The next video will be about the changes to come with this patch, as there are quite a couple. And yep, yeah, it's nice that we got all this, this, all of this now by in the game. All the sixteen divisions. This was the last one to be added in the base game. Sixteen divisions, and four NATO, six for Pact at launch. So now we're gonna see what else is to come, and I'm really hyped to what we will get with the single player. I hope you are as well. If you don't want to miss videos about that, consider subscribing and consider liking so that this video gets shown to more people out there. Helps out a lot. So thanks for that and see you all next one. Bye bye.